Ah, and we are here, ladies and gentlemen. It is Wednesday, and you know what that means. Wednesday wisdom time and diving deeper into the lost wisdom of the pharaohs and the hermetica. But today we find ourselves all the way to the end. All the way to the end of the hermetica. And so, I'm not sure where to start, really. <laughs> we find this being section 20 of the Hermetica, entitled In Praise of Atum. Now, if you've been here with me for this journey, then you know that we've done a lot of rambling on the many mystical, esoteric, occult, as some like to call it, philosophies, spiritual understandings, and wisdom that could be called secret teachings, but that was the title of last week's section. And I highlighted this little bit, you may remember. God is like a musician who creates the harmonies of the cosmos and gives each individual person, you or me, our own particular theme to play. If the music of life seems discordant to us as individuals, we should not blame the master musician or music itself for our disharmony, but we should blame ourselves. We are the out of tune instrument, which does not harmonize the beauty of Atum's composition or God's music. Universe, I believe, meaning one song, one verse. And so Hermes reflects that when we devote ourselves, this is coming from the book, from Timothy Freak and Peter Gandy, the authors here, paraphrasing in the words of Hermes, but that when we devote ourselves to the spiritual path, we mysteriously become perfectly tuned. With that being said, in praise of Atum, of God, Atum being God in this hermetic, ancient Egyptian spiritual philosophy, The legendary sage god, Hermes Trismegistus, Greek for thrice greatest, three times the greatest. It's a combination of the Egyptian Thoth and the Greek Hermes. And this is the first, well, they say it is, truly accessible compendium of the mystical philosophy attributed to Thoth and Hermes. And I would like to give thanks to Thoth and Hermes for leading us on this journey and giving us so much of this great wisdom that has had such a profound influence on figures, even Newton and Shakespeare and Leonardo da Vinci. But let us take a look now, finally, in praise of Atum. In this final chapter, Hermes offers up a glorious hymn to God. <laughs> Through his teachings, the section begins, Hermes has led us to the threshold of truth. All that he may do now is show us by his own example. The joy and liberation of crossing over. 
he abandons himself in a static rapture to a personal experience of God. He sings the praises of God who is one and all, who loves us like a father and is the mother of everything. The eternal constancy which causes the whole universe to change. The goodness that is all around us. We can only thank God for his many blessings by learning to know its greatness. Yet Hermes knows it is God who is singing these psalms through him. God is all that we do, all that we say, all that we are, and all that happens. Hermes has become a passive instrument of God's will. And he no longer sees the world with physical eyes, but witnesses instead the unfolding changes of life within God's eternal mind. He is no longer a body. He is all mind. He is the presence which is present everywhere in everything. He knows the one. And now this would be really somewhere to get to, to have this viewpoint. Oh boy. One moment. <laughs> Sorry, that'll teach me to... That'll teach me to not have my phone silenced. In praise of our tomb, this idea of being able to look, because this has been part of the philosophy throughout this whole hermetic series, is that coming to see creation as God, everything as God. And I already had this philosophy before I started this series, but it's just um, reaffirmed it for me and reassured it from an ancient Egyptian perspective. And so that's the funny thing. Is it seems that the entire planet throughout history has been reaffirming this same esoteric, mystical, pagan, whatever you know you want to call it. This understanding that everything is God and that we are a part of that. We are not separate from God. And that we have great power. We have an ability that should be honored and revered and worked, worked on and improved. But this is not the point. The point is that to see that creation in the constant unfolding as each leaf grows new and birds hatch out of their eggs and young men and women are born as children. All of this as the unfolding of God and even this video, as I'm recording it now here on July 26th at 12.04 p.m. in the year 2023 or whatever time you are watching this video as well, as far in the future. It is all an unfolding of everything, of God, of our tomb. And so Hermes is overcome with mystical vision and realizes that while still in the body, he has been made a God. He prays for nothing except that he will remain forever knowing and loving God. He is born again, it says, 
and language is inadequate to express the wonders that he is experiencing. Like the gods, he can now only sing God's praises through silence. Remember, everything in the cosmos is constantly changing. Things are born and pass away and come into existence again like old plants each winter to return as new shoots in spring. This is the circle of time, and these are one of the laws or principles of reality. But it's a magical thing. Because this circle of time regulates the process of change. And this was something that was discussed in the circle of time section of the Hermetica. In the beginning, there is unity. Unity separates into the two fundamental forces, which, like the negative and positive poles of a battery, they generate everything. This was another... Lessons on the living cosmos. Well, I'm not sure where to go, so let's just dive right into in praise of Atum in the words of Thoth and Hermes, Hermes Trismegistus, on this final bit here in the Hermetica. All right. <clears throat> Once again, thank you for being here and joining me seeking after this very interesting spiritual philosophy and mystical wisdom, the lost wisdom of the pharaohs and the ages. Now, in praise of Atum, begins by saying, in a place open to the sky, facing west at the hour of sunset or east at sunrise, I pray that the cosmos be flung open to me and that all nature may receive the sound of my songs. Open, great earth, and trees silence your waving boughs. For I am about to sing the praise of the one and the all. Justice, praise the just through me. Goodness, praise the good through me. Truth, praise the truth. Praise the true through me. Selflessness, praise the all through me. It is your words that through me sing your praises. For all comes from you, and all returns to you. Accept these pure offerings of speech from a heart and soul uplifted. You of whom no words can tell, no tongue can speak, and only silence can declare. I thank you with a brimming heart, for it is only by your grace that I see your light and come to know you. No man knows. I thank you whose name no man knows. You whom we honor with the title Atum, because you are our master. You whom we call Father, because you have shown in all your acts toward us the loving kindness and warm affection that a father feels. No, your love is greater than a father's love, for you have given us the gifts of mind and speech and knowledge, mind so that we may approach you speech so that we may call to you, and knowledge so that we may experience you, finding our salvation in your light and becoming filled with bliss. 
We can thank you only by learning to know your greatness. I have learned to know you, you the most brightly blazing light of mind. I have learned to know you, you the true life of humankind. I have learned to know you, you the prolific all womb, which impregnates itself. I have learned to know you, you the eternal constancy, which stands unmoved and causes the whole universe to revolve. Who can speak about you? Who can speak to you? Where shall I look to praise you? For you are space. Where shall I look to praise you? Upwards or downwards? For you are space in which all things are contained. There is no place but you. <clears throat> all is in you. What offering can I bring you? For you are all things. You give everything and receive nothing. There is nothing that you lack. For what shall I praise you? For the things you manifest. Or the things that you conceal? How shall I sing to you? Am I my own? Have I anything which is mine? Am I other than you? You are all that I am. You are all that I do. You are all that I say. You are all that happens. You are all that has not occurred. You are mind in your thinking. You are father in your creating. You are Atum who does everything. You are primal goodness everywhere. You have revealed your being and I am overcome. While I am still in the body, you have made me a God by the gift of your eternal life, and I am filled with joy. With these words of praise, I adore you, who alone are goodness. I make no prayer but this, that by your will I be kept always, still knowing and loving you and that I may never fall away from this blessed life. Father, Atum, you have filled me with this good and beautiful, beautiful vision. My mind's eye is almost blinded with splendor, more penetrating than visible light, yet so full of immortal life that it does not hurt or harm me. By your mercy, a form has been fashioned within me, which is not made of matter, and I have entered into an immortal body. I have been born again in mind, and the bodily shape I had before has left me. I am no longer an object tangible, colored, with spatial dimensions. I am alien to all that is seen with bodily eyesight. To such eyes, I am no longer visible. I am your instrument. Mind is your plectrum, and your wisdom plucks music from me. I sing a song of my soul, for your love has reached me, and you have made me a new being. And I no longer see with bodily eyes, but witness with mind. When a man is born again, he is not a body of three dimensions. He is all mind. Now that I see in mind, I perceive myself to be the all. 
I am in heaven and earth. I am in water and air. I am in beasts and plants. I am a newborn babe. I am still in the womb. I am yet to be conceived. I am the presence, which is present everywhere. I see incredible depths. How can I describe this vision? With my mind, I see mind. I know the one that wakes me from forgetfulness. I see my soul. I am afraid to speak. I have found the source of the power of all powers that has no beginning. I see a fountain bubbling with life. I am mind. I have seen. I have found that which I seek. I know peace in your purpose. By your will, I am born again. Language is inadequate. The gods sing a hymn of silence. And I am silently singing. And I am silently singing. And that concludes in praise of Atum, in the final hymn from Hermes, in the Hermetica, to his mystical experience of knowing the one, becoming part of the oneness, and his attempt to describe it, translated thousands of years later to us here today in the Hermetica. Boom, ladies and gentlemen. That is a boom to the Hermetica and the lost wisdom of the pharaohs. Now, I mean, I could end it right here, but that would probably be a short video for what we're used to around here. <laughs> so, you know, feel free to click off if you'd like. If that's all you were here for. But that was really deep. That was really dense. Really dense. Now we're going to take a look. I'll go back through that here shortly, but I want to take a look at the sources for the text. This may give us an idea of more places that we can look for more wisdom of the ages and more understanding of this hermetic philosophy and some spiritual philosophies that can be related. Sources for text. The text is compiled from the following writings, which can be found in most versions of the Hermetica. The Stobaeus, which is an anthology of Hermetic excerpts compiled by the scholar John of Stobae in the 5th century. Wow. Wow. I want to get that one. The Asclepius. This is a dialogue between Hermes and his son, usually printed as the first of the Hermetic books. Books 1 through 18, the standard corpus Hermeticum, not including book 15, which is odd. Which is odd. Why would this not include book 15? I always found that weird. We'll get deeper into Hermetic philosophy as we continue further into this series, maybe doing the Corpus Hermeticum 
Next, the Divine Pie Menu. Because I personally haven't read that myself. And that would be fun to go through. So the Corpus Hermeticum, fragments, important hermetic fragments collected from the writings of many ancient authors. Their number varies from edition to edition. <clears throat> the Nag Hammadi texts, new hermetic material discovered amongst the Gnostic Gospels found in Nag Hammadi in 1945. Number one, the prophecies of Hermes, the Asclepius, the Stobaeus, the Nag Hammadi. So these are each of the chapters now. The initiation of Hermes drew from the Asclepius, the Nag Hammadi, and Corpus Hermeticum, books one and three. The being of Atum uh, is from the Asclepius as well as Stobaeus. And the Corpus Hermeticum books 2, 4, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, and 16. The being of Atum and a description of God. Contemplating creation was from the Stobaeus Corpus Hermeticum book 5, books 5, 9, 12, and 14. And so this goes on telling us where the information from each of these sections came to us, but it's all really just the Asclepius, the Stobaeus, the Corpus Hermeticum, and that's it. So if we have those texts in the future, then we can start to do some serious discovery. A further reading here in the back says that uh, we could read The History of God by Karen Armstrong. <laughs> or Greek religion, or the Florentine Renaissance. That would be cool. The world of an Elizabethan magus. The Pythagorean source book and library. Ancient philosophy, mystery, and magic. By uh, Peter Kingsley. The mysteries of ancient Egypt. Giordano Bruno and Hermetic Tradition. That'd be a good one. The Rosicrucian Enlightenment. And then here's a um, shout out to the authors, Timothy Freak and Peter Gandy, who gave us this Tarsier Cornerstone edition of the Hermetica. Timothy Freak holds an honors degree in philosophy and has been a lifelong student of world spiritual thought and practice. He has traveled extensively and has been instructed by masters from many different traditions. Fascinating. Peter Gandy is a researcher into the roots of the Western mystery tradition and with a comprehensive understanding of ancient, ancient texts and contemporary commentaries. Thanks to them for giving us this opportunity. And that was, ladies and gentlemen, the Hermetica. And I think we will finish up. We can come back in the future and go through all kinds of stuff and make all kinds of extrapolations like we normally do into more spiritual philosophy and mystical understanding. But to the memory of Giordano Bruno, 1548 to 1600, the last words of thrice great Hermes, Hermes Trismegistus. And remember these words, ladies and gentlemen, powerful words indeed. He writes, wise words, although written by my decaying hand, remain imperishable throughout time, imbued with the medicine of immortality.
by the All Master. Be unseen and undiscovered by all those who will come and go, wandering the wastelands of life, and be hidden until an older heaven births human beings who are worthy of your wisdom. And having sounded this prayer over the works of his hands, Hermes was received into the sanctuary of eternity, into the sanctuary of eternity, ladies and gentlemen. And that was an essential and an illuminating journey for anyone who's interested or has now found an interest in understanding the lost wisdom of the pharaohs and the mystical, spiritual, esoteric, occult philosophy. of Hermetics in the Hermetic. Boom! Be sure to get this book for yourself to put it on your shelf. I have it linked below in the description so you can do just that. Over here, I also have an initiation into Hermetics by Franz Barden. We have um, <clears throat> the Emerald Tablet of Hermes. Maybe let's run through that real quick, since it's super simple. This is just a bunch of translations of it, really. Let's do the translation of Isaac Newton. So the Emerald Tablet of Hermes, translated by, by Isaac Newton, circa 1680. Number one. Tis true without lying, certain and most true. So a double entendre, a verily, verily. <laughs> Certainly true, twice. Number two, that which is below is like that which is above. And that which is above is like ye which is below, to do ye miracles of one only thing. Now this is like a collection of the overarching philosophy, the tenets of the philosophy of the Emerald Tablet. Maybe we'll do a, sec a separate video on each of these at a separate time. 12th century Latin. Oh, when I entered into the cave, I received the tablet Zaradi, which is inscribed from between the hands of Hermes, in which I discovered these words. Let's give you a quick little history of the tablet. It's only a page, so it'll be nice and quick. The history of the tablet, largely summarized from Holmyard, 1957. The tablet... The Emerald Tablet of Hermes probably first appeared in the West in editions of the pseudo Aristotelian sec Secretum Secretorium Secretorum <laughs> Easy for me to say which was actually a translation of the Kitab Sir al-Asar a book of advice to kings, which was translated into Latin by Johannes Hispalinus, circa 1140, by Philip of Tripoli, circa 1243. Other translations of the tablet may have been made during the same period by Plato of Tivoli, <clears throat> excuse me, and Hugh of Santala. Perhaps from different sources, the date of the Kitab Sir al-Asar 
is uncertain, though circa 1800 has been suggested and is not clear when the tablet became part of this work. Homeyard was the first to find another early Arabic version. If you remember in the history of the Hermetica, it made its way from Alexandria. And then when the Holy Roman Empire became intolerant and started destroying pagan temples and the mystical knowledge and the wisdom of the ages, which was my favorite part of this series, if you missed it, go back to the beginning and talking about the her history of the Hermetica, because let's go back to that for just a second here. Um, the early origins of the Hermetica were shrouded in mystery. However, there was a collection. They were collated. So there's a whole bunch of different uh, surviving works that were attributed to Hermes and are not written in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, but in Greek, Latin, and Coptic. And these were collated or collected in the city of Alexandria in Egypt during the second and third centuries, common era. And so there, the hermetic philosophy inspired and um, it became an influence. It inspired some of the greatest intellectual achievements of the world. Alexandria was a great center, center of learning, surpassing even Athens. But later, the Holy Roman Empire, despite the sophistication and cultural achievements of the ancients, just referred to all this ancient wisdom as paganism. And these guys are pagans, which simply means country dwellers. And in 415, Hypatia, one of the greatest scientists and mystical spiritual philosophers that knew all of the pagan or esoteric or mystical or occult traditions, because they were being practiced side by side in this universal city, Alexandria was called, that was filled with Greeks and Jews and Egyptians and Babylonians and Phoenicians and Buddhists and Indians and people that were studying the mystical knowledge of Pythagore Pythagorism and Chaldean oracles and the Greek mystery schools, the Egyptian mystery schools, astrology, alchemy, Stoic philo philosophy, platonic, hermetic, I mean, the list could go on for a very long time. And so, they destroyed Alexandria and all the great pagan temples and ushered in the thousand-year period, thousand year period of our history that the Holy Roman Empire, you know, destroyed everything in the name of who knows what. But we had the Dark Ages. And the previously before unknown phenomenon of book burning, getting rid of this kind of stuff. Okay? Hermetics. And so the Hermetica survived and escaped to this newly emerging Arab culture, taking their knowledge in the Hermetic writings with them 200 years later, the Muslims created an empire whose learning and scientific achievements were unsurpassed, and they called their new university the House of Wisdom. So this traveled, and so this gives us a little bit of an understanding. That was before it made it back eventually to Florence, being discovered later in the Renaissance. Now, so we can see how this earliest version of the Hermetica could be traced back to this translation of the Kitab Sir al-Asar. Because after a couple hundred years after surviving the Holy Roman Empire, the only way that it survived was in the Arab Empire. And this Arabic version. Ruska, continuing now with our little bit of the history of the Emerald Tablets and Hermetics. Didn't know we were going this way, but. Holmyard um, was the first to find this early 
Arabic version. Ruska found a 12th century recension claiming to have been dictated by Sergius of Nalvius in the Kitab, the second book of the elements of foundation. See, this book has to do with the elements and more into that understanding. But shortly after Rusk found another version appended to the Kitab Sir al Kalika, the book of the secret creation and the art of nature. See, this is the kind of stuff that Hermetics is about. <laughs> the elements, the secret book of creation and the art of nature, which is also known as Kitab Balenus al-Hakim, the book of Balenus, the wise on the causes. Hmm. It has been proposed that this book was written may have been written as early as 650 and was definitely finished by 813 to 833. Scholars have seen similarities between this book and the Syriac book of treasures written by Job of Odessa in the 9th century. And more interestingly, the Greek writings of the Bishop Nemesius of Emesa in Syria from the mid fourth century. However, though, this suggests a possible Syriac source. None of these writings contain the tablet. Balinus is usually identified with Apollonius of Tyna, but there's little evidence to connect him with the Kitab Balabias. And even if there was, the story implies, implies sorry, that Balanus found the tablet rather than wrote it. And the recent discoveries of the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Nag Hammadi texts suggest that hiding texts in caves is not impossible, even if we did not have the pyramids before us. Ruska has suggested an origin further east. And Needham has proposed an origin in China. Homyard, Davis, and Anan all considered that this tablet may be one of the earliest of all alchemical works that we have that survives history, thanks to the intolerant or holy Roman Empire. Maybe. I just like to toss the blame that direction because they... Man, they screwed us up. We really could have been an uh, enlightened, advanced society. But no, that's not allowed. We can't have people that won't fall in line to the system. It's weird. It's the weirdest thing about our history, actually, is the control structures. But anyway, that has nothing to do with the Emerald Tablets, at least not... Yeah, it does, but not a, a, what we're talking about here today. So it should be remarked that apparently the Greeks and Egyptians used the term translated as emerald for emeralds, green, green granites, and perhaps even green jasper. In medieval times, the emerald table of the Gothic kings of Spain and the Sacro Catino, a dish said to have belonged to the Queen of Sheba, to have been used at the Last Supper, and to be made of emerald, were made of green glass. Following are multiple translations of this seminal text. And so that's the rest of the book. It's just a bunch of translations. And then... There's a hypothetical, and then there is commentaries. And now I will read to you the Emerald Tablet of Hermes, or the Emerald Tablet of Thoth. But here's the Arabic version, 12th century Latin, 
like I said, let's go back to Isaac Newton's because that'll probably be fun. So, once again, tis true without lying, certain and most true. Number two, that which is below is like that which is above, and that which is above is like ye which is below to do ye miracles of one only thing. Number three, and as all things have been and arose from one, by ye meditation of one, so all things have their birth from this one thing, by adaptation. Number four, the sun is its father, and the moon its mother. Number five, the wind hath carried it in its belly, the earth its norse. That is nursed by the earth. Okay. Number six, the father of all perfection in ye whole world is here. Number seven, its force of power is entire if to be converted into earth. 7a, separate thou ye earth from ye fire, ye subtle from the gross, sweetly with great industry. <laughs> Isaac Newton. It ascends from ye earth to ye heaven, and again descends to ye earth, receives ye force of things superior and inferior. By this means you shall have ye glory of the whole world, and thereby obscurity shall fly from you. In each of these translations, there's a little bit different words from Madame Blavatsky. We'll do that one next. So was the world created. Its force is above all force, for it vanquishes every subtle thing and penetrates every solid thing. Number 12, from this are and do come admirable adaptions whereof ye means or process is here in this. Since I am called Hermes Trismegist, having three parts of ye philosophy of ye whole world. 14, that which I have said of ye operation of ye son is accomplished and ended. Now, in much simpler words, from Madame H Helena Blavatsky, founder of the Theosophist Society and Movement, what is below is like that which is above, and what is above is similar to that which is below to accomplish the wonders of the one thing. This is a summary of the Hermetic philosophy in the Emerald Tablet of Hermes. As all things were produced by the meditation of one being, so all things were produced from this one by adaption. Its father is the sun, its mother is the moon. It is the cause of all perfection throughout the whole earth. Its power is perfect if it is changed into earth. Separate the earth from the fire and the subtle from the gross, acting prudently with judgment. Ascend with the greatest sagacity from earth to heaven, and unite together the power of things inferior and superior. Thus you will possess the light of the whole world, and all obscurity will fly away from you. This thing has more fortitude than the fortitude itself, because it will overcome every subtle thing and penetrate every solid thing. By it the world was formed. And this, as we know, this thing that is being described by Hermes 
in all of these translations is as we just learned about in the Hermetica, the knowledge of Atum. Of Atum, ladies and gentlemen. And that's a little bit of the Emerald Tablet of Hermes. And I think maybe next week, we'll either dive into the Kabbalion, which I've read a good bit of, or we can dive into the Corpus Hermeticum. And Hermes Trismegistus in his first book and talking to his son, because I don't believe I have read this story yet. Fascinating, ladies and gentlemen, fascinating. Once again, thank you so much for being here, seeking after the lost wisdom of the pharaohs. That was a fantastic series. And being here, seeking after knowledge. And remember, seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment. Seek to discover the lost wisdom of the ages and the mysteries of our history. And remember also that there is no way to happiness because happiness is the way. It is the activity that we must bring to life. And when we can do that, then all the things that we've been telling ourselves, oh, when I'm this kind of person or when I have that much of it becomes irrelevant because then we are there. And then hopefully our entire journey is wonderful. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to expand the description and check out my Etsy shop. I have some great landscape paintings there for you to find. And so you can put them on your wall and you will love them. They're good price too, as well as expand the description to get this book for yourself, to put it on your shelf so that you will have it for reference in the future, ladies and gentlemen. Also, be sure to subscribe if you got value. Share this with somebody who is like-minded and could use this interesting journey. <laughs> Thank you so much to those of you who spend time with me here in the premieres. And until next time, be the change that you want to see. Be the example that you want to set. And we'll see you on next Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen, and next Wednesday Wisdom. Diving deeper into Hermetics and the lost wisdom of Hermes, Trismegistus, and Thoth. Na, 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 na.